Hello and welcome to this video on Cisco Wireless Networking Solution. In this video I'd like to show you how to configure LDAP on the controller. So this is useful if you use a local authentication on the controller um, with a EAP or .1x authentication or web authentication and you want to rely on an external LDAP server. So if you use WebAuth, it's pretty simple, but if you use EAP slash .1x, uh, be careful, .1x and EAP on the local EAP on the controller using an external LDAP server only works if you use EAPFAST or PEEP with GTC or EAPTLS. You can also use EAPFAST with MHAP v2 or PEEP with MHAP v2 or LEAP, but only if your LDAP server returns a password in clear text. So that may be working with OpenLDAP, for example, but I would not be working if you use Windows Active Directory. So if you use Windows Active Directory like I do in this example, you can only use EAPFAST GTC or PEEP GTC or EAPTLS. Okay, so to use an LDAP server, you first need to have a local EAP profile. So here I create a profile that I call my local. And for simplicity, I allowed EAPFAST and PEEP. My next step is to create a WLAN. I created one that I call LDAP. And the security for this one is WPAv2 with AES and 802.1x. In my AAA server tab, I'm going to say that I'm going to use local EAP authentication and I'm going to use the EAP profile I created before. If you were to use web authentication, you could also point here to say that the authentication should occur on LDAP first and then on local reduce server. But here, as I'm using 802.1x slash EAP, the place where I say that LDAP should be used first is here in a local EAP authentication priority. Okay, next up, my next step is to create a new LDAP server. So I set the IP address. I keep the port number as default, which is what you should do with Windows. I'm keeping the default method, which is anonymous here, but just to tell you in a minute that it doesn't work with Windows. But let's work step by step. The user base I'm going to use is users, and my domain is example.com. If you're not familiar with these items here, uh, check the other video we have on LDAP that explains to you how you build those fields for this kind of configuration. The object type is going to be the account name, and the object type is going to be the person. For now, I'm going to use secure mode via TLS disable to show you what happens when you enable it. I'm here using a controller code 7.6. And you see the warning, only things that return a clear text password or GTC based items and TLS. On my SSID, I do not need to call specifically that server uh, because my local profile is going to rely on that server. But if you define several and you want to make sure that you're pointing to the right server, you can call it specifically from the SSID. This is going to override the global list, so instead of going down the list of LDAP servers, you would call directly this one. But as this one is the first one, pointing it here or not would be exactly the same. Now on my client, I can set up a new profile that I call LDAP. Security is at WPA2 Enterprise. And because I have an Intel adapter, I have the uh, possibility to refine my security and point to Cisco PIP, which is PIP with GTC. Again, if you had a default Windows driver, you would have only the first two here, and you would not be able to set up LDAP with Active Directory. Because with PIP Active Directory, the password is not returned in clear text and the controller will not support it. So with GTC, I can configure Cisco PIP don't need to check the certificates in this example, and I can ask the system to prompt me for username and password values. I'm also going to say that this is going to be a user authentication just to simplify the cycles. As soon as I've done that, I'm going to go on my controller, and I'm going to debug AAA LDAP enable just to see what happens. And I want to do this because on my controller for now, my security is set to anonymous with my LDAP server, right here. And if I try to call that profile from Windows, it's asked me for username and password, and if I enter my credentials, the authentication fails, as you can see. On my controller, I see a lot of messages 
but most of them come back to this operations error handling LDAP response invalid parameters. And this is because Windows does not support, here I'm on Windows 8, so it doesn't support anonymous binds. So what this is, is that when you query your LDAP server, you have basically two ways of doing it. One is anonymous, that is to say you query information about the user, and you don't say who you are when making that query. So that's a little bit risky and insecure because anybody in the network could, could query your LDAP server or your Windows Active Directory database about username and password pairs. So old Windows servers used to allow that, but they don't anymore. They only allow now authenticated, which means that you are first going to tell who you are. So you're going to enter a value on the controller to say, this is the user I am. And if that user is authenticated on the LDAP server, that user will be able to see the rest of the database based on who the user is. So I'm going to modify my configuration here and get to authenticated and of course have to say who I am going to use as a user to verify the Active Directory database. For simplicity here, I'm going to use the administrator. But here again, if you want to know in detail how this works, please refer to the other video on LDAP where we explain how these things are combined together. In this example, I'm using administrator. So because it's in the same location as the user base, I do not really need to set users and example.com, but putting it doesn't hurt in case I decide to change my user base or the username. Password, and now my LDAP is using authenticated. Back on my laptop, if I try to associate again with the same username and password, this time the authentication works, and I should see that user on my controller if I go to monitor current clients client is there associated and authenticated. However, although I'm using the authenticated, keep in mind that authenticated doesn't mean secure. In other words, that first phase when I authenticate the user asking for credentials is done to verify who is asking, but the dialogue itself is not encrypted, which means that if I go to my laptop where I did a capture of the exchange between my controller and my LDAP server, so 172.31.255.40 is my controller and 155 is my LDAP server, Active Directory Server in Windows 8, you see here the initial um, handshake and then you see the bind request, the authentication phase by which I tell who is the user who is going to verify other users' credentials. And you see that's sent from my controller and if I look in here, which is the detail of the request, and I go down to the packet level, you see I'm sending here the password. I forgot to is my administrator password on this Windows. So it's in the clear. And when later on I verify my Cisco2 user, and I go again to the packet level, you can see that my password is Cisco. So authenticated is secure in the sense that it doesn't allow anybody to request authentication, but it is not encrypted in the sense that anybody can sniff the connection and see what the password pairs are for the admin verifying the user credentials and for the credentials themselves. So there is another option now in the controller 7.6 and later by which you can set this secure mode by TLS. And when you enable that mode, what happens is that your controller this time is going to first run a TLS handshake, which is pretty much the same thing as what you do when you do HTTPS on the web. You are going to receive a certificate from the LDAP server and the controller is going to always accept that certificate. And that is going to be used to create a secure tunnel between the controller and the LDAP server. The result is that if your LDAP server is set to allow encrypted LDAP, then the dialogue is going to be encrypted. The result is that on my laptop, if I connect with the same credentials, authentication is still successful. But this time, if I go and capture the packet and look at what happens beyond the initial handshake, you see that there is a TLS session that occurs by which the controller and the server create a secure tunnel. The result is that there is no information anymore about what is being exchanged between the controller and the LDAP server. And there is no packet in which I can see what kind of information was exchanged between these two. So this is a nice way to protect the communication between your controller and your LDAP server. Of course, this implies that your server supports TLS so you must have set a certificate somewhere on your server.
But of course on your controller if you debug LDAP like we've done, you can still see the communication because you are before the tunnel, so you can see what was sent to the LDAP server and what kind of answer was returned. But anybody sniffing traffic between the controller and the LDAP server will not be able to see anything. So this is the difference between anonymous, authenticated, and secure mode via TLS. By the way, technically you could also set anonymous with a TLS, but if your concern is security, it will not make sense for you to on one hand encrypt everything because you are concerned about security and on the other hand allow anybody to query your lab server. So really TLS mode only makes sense if you're also using authenticated because you're security conscious. And that's LDAP on the controller. I hope this was useful for you. I would like to thank you for watching.